My GF cheated. I never let her forget. Part 2. Part 2. The Revenge. So this is one of those revenge stories where it was only half planned. I knew I wanted to get revenge on Lisa for hurting me so much. But I kind of just improvised as opportunities came up. My original kind spirit had died of my birthday on that chair. All my morals went out the window. I never cheated in relationships therefore I believed I would never get cheated on. I realize now how dumb that is but that's what I thought at the time. I didn't care what collateral damage I caused as long as my mission to hurt Lisa as much as possible was accomplished. So continued every day of my life with this new selfish mindset. I was sitting at my computer later that next week skimming Facebook when I saw the profile of one of her track teammates on my feed. That's when I had my first vengeful idea. I decided I was going to attempt to get her teammates to bite the bait that I was about to cast out into the water. Though, I didn't have proof she hooked up with my teammates, she was clearly trying to hide conversations between them. So I was going to see how many people who are close to here I could passionately hug. Luckily I had more options than she had when cheating on me. A women's track team is much larger than a men's basketball team. Also much better looking. Lisa's teammate I originally spotted on my Facebook had a boyfriend but I thought, clearly everyone cheats, let's see if it's true. I proceed to do the little flirty social media dance with her. You know, the one where I like a couple of her photos, she likes a couple of mine back. I shoot her a message and bam. She's at my house in my bed about a week later. I proceed to do something similar to other teammates of hers. All on her 4x4 relay team coincidentally. Two of the three girls I passionately hugged had boyfriends and subsequently cheated on them with me which gave me some real mixed emotions. It stroked my broken ego and also made me bitter and sad. Giving me one of those women ain't asset. None of them are loyal attitudes. This is such a typical story of while fighting monsters I became a monster. This actually became my go-to strategy because it accomplished two things in my ducked up mind. It exposed a cheater but more importantly if they were willing to cheat on their boyfriends they would. A be more secretive about it which meant the drama that would ensue when it came out would be elevated and. B it made me feel better about Lisa cheating because it proved it wasn't me that was the problem. It was women that were the problem. I know it's ducked up but that's what I thought back then. I started to collect something from every girl that I hooked up with, like a bra, a pair of panties, or some jewelry etc. Not for some creepy reason, but this is important later and was a part of my plan sometimes I didn't even have to try. One girl left a pair of very distinguishable shoes. I knew Lisa would know whose shoes they were. They belonged to the girl that Lisa's ex-boyfriend rebounded with after Lisa and him broke up which highly upset her because it was her friend. Now it would upset her more because that same girl slept with both of her ex-boyfriends. I especially tried to collect items if it was something that I knew Lisa could distinguish like a sweater from the women's track team with her teammate's name on it. After some time I had collected a boatload of asset. After a couple months or so, one of the Lisa's teammate's boyfriends found out about me and his girlfriend and it started a big beautiful dramatic explosion of series of events with her and her teammates. This led to all of them finding out about one another's promiscuity. The drama was massive. Even their coaches had to get involved it got so bad. This made me feel so powerful in such an evil yet satisfying way. I fell in love with the destruction I was causing. The most awesome part about all of it was that same week, the athletics PR team had put massive posters of me all over campus promoting the next game. They were everywhere. Some of the posters took up the entire side of buildings so Lisa and her friends had to see me all over campus every day while this drama was erupting all around them. I felt like a triumphant dictator. It was glorious and pathetic at the same time. Their coach even proceeded to have a serious meeting with the compliance department and my team's coaches. My coaches literally laughed at her saying this seems like an internal issue, but op hasn't done anything illegal or broken any school policy so there is nothing we can do. This infuriated the women's track coach. Their team had fallen apart. Their national ranking began to plummet. Then Lisa's coach even got in trouble for being caught tearing down some of the smaller posters of me on campus in raging temper tantrum. I loved all of it. I continued to add fuel to the fire. Posting photos of me with girls, smiling, being happy every chance I could on Facebook and Instagram. 
But under it all, I was bitter. I was so deep into my new minds that I had already forgotten the kind-hearted naive kid I used to be. I hated my old self because I let some girl emasculate me. I was so full of self-pity looking back it, it's depressing. No one really knew though because I played the cool guy attitude in front of people. There was even a girl on campus on one of the sports teams who claimed that she was pregnant with my kid after I pretended to like her the same way I did with all of the other girls on Lisa's team and soon as we passionately hugged I moved on. It's a long story, but it turned out she wasn't pregnant but the news or press that came from that further dug the knife deeper into Lisa's side. I left a trail of women I deceived and relationships I destroyed. I feel bad now but at the time I didn't care because they were equally at fault in my eyes since they were cheating on their boyfriends or sleeping with their friend's ex. Quickly, girls became weary of me. Plus I was running out of potential targets duck I was an awful human being then the way I was thinking and I was going after girls that weren't even friends or on the track team with Lisa but were just around her in daily life. For example her classmates and as well as her own family. I even flirted with her sister who was married with a kid and I almost succeeded. She was down but her and Lisa's dad found out about it and stepped in and put a stop at all before we could do anything. Her sister was ostracized as the news spread within the family. I wanted Lisa to know I was everywhere and constantly remind her how she ducked up. In my eyes this was all her fault and she unleashed this fury of chaos upon herself. She should never have ducked with me like that. Lisa had to take an extended medical leave because of her depression and mental health issues she was experiencing from the whole situation. She was becoming suicidal. She even had to go on medication and lost tons of weight. She began to look extremely unhealthy. The whole mess was torturing her and the more she hurt the better I felt. At this point I had already inflicted more damage to the feeling of power. I spent zero time processing my own emotions or moving on from what happened. All I wanted was more revenge and I couldn't stop. After weeks of ignoring Lisa's texts and calls she finally gets a hold of me by showing up to my apartment unannounced late at night. She was there to pick up some stuff she left from when she lived there to take home. She was actually a local and her parents lived close by. She was still on her medical leave and no longer staying on campus but rather with her parents I told her I would bring her stuff to her parents house that weekend but I couldn't let her in because I had company. Which I did but it wasn't one of her teammates or friends unfortunately. I then to take all the items I had collected from all the girls over the weeks. There was probably like 8 or 9 things from different girls including her teammates and threw their belongings in along with Lisa's stuff into big black trash bags. I took the bags to her house and then called Lisa's dad. I told him I left her stuff on his porch and him to inform his demon daughter. Me and Lisa's dad actually really got along and he even took my side after Lisa and I broke up. But after all these events transpired he obviously had a negative opinion of me. 15 minutes after I get off the phone with her Lisa's dad, I get a call from Lisa. I answer because I want to hear her reaction to having all these other girls as it mixed in with hers. She was sobbing uncontrollably. It sounded like that half crying half mumbling thing people do when they are hysterical. She wasn't even angry, just desperately begging me to point to stop my tyranny. I just smiled and baked in the glory of hearing her hurt. I responded why were there other guys in our relationship? You mix them into our relationship like I mixed other girls acid into your asset. It's perfect little ironic metaphor. I thought it sounded cool at the time and was real proud of myself. Facepalm. I later found out from one of Lisa's friends who knew she was cheating on me during our relationship that Lisa was convinced I was the one cheating on her because I was always out of town. This doesn't make sense since I was out of town because of basketball, a very legit excuse. Not just randomly on my own accord. You could literally see my schedule on the school's website. I kept in contact with her constantly when I was gone but obviously when I had practice or team meetings I couldn't be on my phone. But she didn't have the logic in her brain to figure this out I guess. I assume it's just an excuse she made to protect her insecurities about the whole fiasco or to keep face with people who knew she was cheating. Months go by. Lisa comes back to school from her medical leave and we bump into each other at the physical therapy center in our athlete facility building. I see this as yet another opportunity. It had been a while since I did something that hurt her and I was still hungry for more vengeance. 
I proceed to pretend like I want to rekindle things with her. She is cautious at first but eventually bites after about a week. We start to mend our relationship. We proceed for about a month but I wouldn't call this a relationship. I forbid her to have any male friends nor is she allowed to go out and party with her girlfriends. I also need full access to all her accounts and her location at all times. It was more like a hostage situation. It gave me a sense of control. Meanwhile I'm not being faithful at all. This was my plan all along. Finally, she finds out about me sleeping with a girl in one of her classes and we have a nasty breakup. I told her that she literally knows what it felt like to be me when we last dated. Yet again, I felt triumphant. It was just another chance to hurt her and I did. After this we don't speak for years. I graduate university and move to Central America. She messages me while I'm there about a year after I moved and about two years after we last spoke. At this point my life has become that of a real degenerate. I was doing copious amounts of drugs on a daily basis and about 75% of my life was involved in some sort of illegal or nefarious activities. But I still blame her for me becoming the dark soul that I was in taking no responsibility for bitter immoral nature. I hadn't had another relationship since her and always had trouble because I couldn't trust a woman in any capacity anymore. Even after years had passed, I saw this instance of her messaging me as yet another opportunity to hurt her. We begin to talk as friends and even getting flirty with each other over Facebook Messenger. Mind you there is literally many countries, states and an ocean between us at this point. I was planning a trip back to my old university to visit some friends. However, I told her was different, I explained to her I was moving back to the city for a new job I was just offered. We decide to meet up when I get back and see if there's anything worth saving between us. I had put on my best acting hat and try to seem like I've put our past behind us. However, I'm just as vengeful now as I was years ago. She's finishing up her last year at university and I make the trip back to the USA. I meet Lisa at a coffee shop when I arrive. We spend the entire night together. From her point of view it really looks like we had moved past our differences and what happened. We could actually work things out. However, I'm not moving back obviously like I told her. I am only stay two nights. She doesn't know this. After hooking up a few times and spending two days together, without mentioning anything to her about me leaving, I pack my things and get back on a plane back to Central America. I blocked her on all my social media and communication outlets. This time I could only fantasize about what happened to her when I disappeared after she thought I had moved back and supposedly was ready to give our relationship another try. This time however it wasn't as satisfying as my previous plots of revenge. My drug habit and lifestyle only got worse every year. Three years later I was hospitalized and almost died because of my extended drug use. I was never sober a full 24 hours after that day that went through that ducking period calendar. Looking back, as much pain as I might have caused her with my vengeful life, my new identity that consumed my old one was so tainted with a dark spirit at heart. I think I honestly did more harm to myself with my actions and led me to down the road where I had no morals anymore. Though I spent the entirety of this story telling everyone of how I kept getting revenge at my ex for cheating on me, as satisfying as it was, I wish I would have spent an equal amount of energy healing myself from the incident. If anyone reading this is experiencing the pain that comes with cheating, a good revenge story can bring you some satisfaction but I hope you don't make the same mistake I did. Rather spend more time healing yourself from the hurt and moving past it. The revenge won't heal you. It will be a separate journey but could distract you from putting yourself back together. Luckily I got sober and am sober now 4 plus years. I even had another girlfriend of 2 years cheat on me before I got sober but this time I didn't take revenge. I spent my time healing. I changed and only focused on myself and that was way more satisfying than the revenge I got on Lisa for cheating on me. Now I'm married almost 2 years to a woman who is sober and man do I have a good life. I have a dream job and a dream marriage. Thank you everyone who read this. Sorry if it wasn't well written I never write like this but I have never told the full story in detail before and I got a lot out of writing it. Mostly what I hope to get from this is to share my experiences doing horrible things but feeling an immense satisfying feel from it where it's almost addictive. 
and morphing from generally a good person to a relatively dark evil one. Obviously people have dark moments but I feel like my personality and psyche has never been the same since that experience. I'm looking forward to any responses to the people willing to read this essay. Written by commenter TLDR, updated a woman a few years younger than him in college, Lisa. Lisa kept a period tracker and kept when she had unprotected S time, while documenting their S time for GF who had fallen asleep. Op saw she had been having unprotected S time with at least four dudes since they had been dating. Op's roommate kicked her out. Op decided to get revenge. This started with ducking all three of her relay partner's track team which eventually led to the team crashing. They also had BFS, so Op used this as fuel to say that women are the problem, not him. At this time Op starts going down the rabbit hole with drugs and alcohol. This continued on for a long time, and Op started keeping an item from women that would be identifiable to Lisa for his plan. He would purposely target own words girls close to Lisa so drama would be worse, and he would have more ammunition to hurt her. Lisa took a mental health break from depression, and came to Op's house asking for her stuff back. He brought it to her parents and put all the items he had been collecting. She called him crying and he reveled in it. Months later, they run into each other at PT and he convinces her to give it another shot, knowing it's a game. Knowingly holds her hostage, no guy friends, no parties, no going out, all while cheating. They eventually break up. Years later, Op is contacted by Lisa and says Hess moving back to their country for a job. IRL Hess going for a two-day visit and basically catfishes her into trying to date him again, they meet up and hang out the whole time. He then packs up and leaves without a word to hurt her again. After this op goes down a bad road with drugs and alcohol, ends up in the hospital, and has another GF cheat on him. He did not take revenge on her. Op is now married, and has a good job and has presumably been clean. He is also aware of how toxic it all is. I think that's everything. Edit 1, hey everyone. It's been a little over 100 days since I posted this and I've been pretty much astonished at the number of people who read this. I appreciate all the comments even though it was a real mixed bag of responses. It's kinda spread to Facebook and YouTube etc and it's real interesting how different the sentiment is on each of those platforms. One of the most common questions I've been getting is, have you apologized or talked to Lisa since the events in this story? The answer is no. Not yet. I am planning on it though. She's on a long list of amends I have been making for years. It looks like I'll be back in her city sometime next year. And I'll reach out to her then. I know a lot of you are telling me not to but I have spoken to my sponsor, my therapist, and mentors about this and the decision is to apologize for my actions and I agree it needs to be done. Also a lot of comments where people are completely missing the point of narrative of the story and feel the need to try and be my therapist or something and tell how I should have done this or that almost decade ago, which was not the point. It's obviously horrible how I reacted that's not what this was about. This was about reflection without bias. And as I mentioned in my post I have gotten into dating again since that relationship with Lisa many years ago. And most of my girlfriends and relationships after Lisa were good but with one of them I got cheated again in an even more horrific way. And was significantly more traumatizing than this story I wrote with Lisa but I had learned from the experience with Lisa and rather didn't take revenge and just walked away. That's when I finally got sober and it led to the life I have now. And in considering writing post illustrating that story because I actually end up doing the healthier thing even though I was hurt even more than with Lisa. The thing that totally shocked me and honestly filled my heart with empathy is the sheer number of men who reached out to me on here sharing their own stories of infidelity and drug abuse either asking for advice or just to share their own emotions and stories and I felt connected to people dealing with the things I did back then and it was so fulfilling to have the opportunity to help these men deal with their trauma in healthier ways than I originally did. But thank you all for your responses as much as they vary. But generally I think all arguments made below have an element of truth.